Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing how your failure to either get knocked up or knock somebody up is the is causing society to collapse. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Apothic Inferno? Yes. From the Apothic Winery in Modesto, California. Yes. So we're on a wine. I hope this is better than the uh, uh, peach one we had the other day. Um, well, I picked this one, so you know it will be. So you know it'll be awful, god awful. Uh, I, I hope you do a better job of picking wine than you do of picking hey. music. Oh, I was actually talking to, to John on there. Hey, whenever I'm speaking to a lady, I thought she'll you were know. Say wives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, th- I think somebody has some latent guilt, La- latent issues there. Yeah. I, I don't know what's what's going on there. It was a Freudian slip. All right, so we're do you talk- guys want me to share this with you or not? I, I don't know. I haven't had any of it yet to know. Um, I like how I get wine and she's like threatening not to share it with us. <laughs> I will not share your wine with you. So we're talking about the population glut a little bit. Um, when I was a kid growing up, the big fear that, 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 that we were taught uh, was the idea of, of overpopulation, this population explosion. And throughout really all of modern uh, world history, we have had a, a steadily growing population. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, clues out there right now that this is changing. This is changing pretty dramatically. If I, if you look around, you've got places like uh, uh, Japan, Germany, uh, Italy that are currently their their population. They have negative population growth, and much of the world, m- much of the much world, of the developed world, the, the developed, developed world. world. Yeah, that's a better uh, way of saying it. And, and, and I want to kind of talk about that because why do you think that that, that tends to happen? In, it almost it, it seems to be um, the opposite of w- what you would expect. Do you think that in a developed world where people have a uh, higher standard of living that they would be able to afford more kids, and you'd have a you'd have the opposite. You'd have a lower birth rate in the developing world. Is what it would seem to me to be, but that's not the way it's happening. Yeah, well, and, you know, I think it has to do with survival strategy. I mean, you know, we, we say that, that evolution has programmed us to breed, but I don't, I don't know that that's true. Maybe uh, it's more correct to say evolution has programmed us to survive. And in places where death rates are really high, breeding equals surviving. Uh, yeah, yeah. But in places where, where d- uh, death rates, especially infant death rates, are much lower, that doesn't equate across. You, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I, I, I think you might be right. What we're finding, though, is is the key factor that that ties all this area is urbanity. As people move to the cities, birth rates tend to decline. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you have more children in rural areas than you do in urban areas. And for the first time in world history, in this last census, there are more urban people in the world than there are rural people. Hmm. This is something that's never happened before. It's it, it's a major shift uh, in, in what's going on. And there's been recent news. For the first time ever, uh, the United States has dipped below uh, replacement level birth rate. We yes. are now. Now, it doesn't mean that we're below, uh, that, that we're not growing. It, it, we're estimated, the U.S. is estimated to continue to have, have grow, growing population for the next 40 years. Mm-hmm. But it's because of immigration right. more than it's because of birth rate, mm-hmm. and and that's that's something that you know when you start looking at there's there's issues with this. Um, it's it's mostly the the the, the Hispanic Catholics that uh, mm-hmm. immigrants that are coming here, but that's even changing. Uh, while the the Hispanic Catholics are still over uh, over the reproduction rate, if you look at it, mm-hmm. that particular group is the fastest dropping rate of any subpopulation in the United States. They're still over replacement level, but even that group is, is, is dropping very, very rapidly. Do you think that has anything to do with the fact that um, religiously they are not nearly as staunchly against birth control as they used to be? I, I, that, that, that might be part of it. Um, uh, because we, we saw that happening in, in other traditional Catholic nations, uh, Germany, France, Italy. 
Uh, so I, I completely disagree with that assessment. I, I think that is is a completely backwards way of looking at things. Uh, I think their views on it are changing because it is no longer the consensus of the group that it's best for the group's survival at this point. I think if if their numbers were to dwindle, they would swap back in a heartbeat. I don't know that that's true uh, because it's not happening anywhere else in the world. Uh, numbers are dwindling. Uh, you get to places like Japan. Japan is actually at a at at a fear of the Japanese people, uh, you know, ceasing to exist within a couple of centuries at the rate they're going. It's 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 massive. Uh, th th this is a legitimate fear of a lot of stat yeah, statisticians. Yeah, I, I, I think. I think it's a very short view of the statisticians, and I think it's as short a view of the statisticians as when we were kids, when there were, uh, uh, I'm going to say more so when you were a kid than when we were, but there were these movies about these apocalyptic futures where the world was overrun with people, so we went green and, and, and on and yep. on. And, and what we found was the human population adjusted as we started to hit certain numbers. Well, the, the issue is... Right now, particularly in Japan, uh, is is th that there's a large, a, a ridiculously large. Now it's still a minority of the population, but comparatively speaking, a ridiculously large m movement of people that are uh, not interested at all in, um, in 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 having sex or in in reproducing. It's it's a it's a major major problem there right now. Uh, and and here's the issue. I think you're right that it corrects itself, but the problem is that the people that are participating in this are 20s to mid-30s, and those are your prime childbearing ages. Mm -hmm. And if you decide at 40 years old that you want to have kids, the chances of you having 2.1 kids is, it, it is considerably smaller than it is if you decide to have kids at 20. Well, uh, except that um, things like freezing your eggs are becoming so much more affordable now than they used to be. And um, the number of working years that we expect to have is a lot higher than it used to be. I mean, the retirement age for Social Security in the U.S. is, what, 62 or 65? Well, or there's, 68, they're like 67 now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. when that was said originally, like, that was, that was like, yeah. fairly old. Yeah. Um, and we've been but, but, talking for years about raising it even further. But it, but it's still it's still not changing the fact that that biologically the your 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 primary uh, child birthing ages are when people are not doing this. And part of the reason is let's look at uh, at just changes in society. The uh, the the fact that, that women are choosing to 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 follow a, a career path for later in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, and not stay at home and, and, and raise kids. Uh, that's going to have an effect on that. Now, I'm, I, again, you're not making, we're not making a judgment call here. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there, there is an effect on this whenever you choose to wait longer to have, to have kids. Mm -hmm. And we, we know, we, we know that, that this has an effect on the society. Uh, the, the situation that, that the U S is in, uh, of, you know, the, the, the birth rate is is dropping dramatically, but the population is still growing because of immigration. That changes your culture. Mm -hmm. It changes your culture dramatically. Um, you you can see it in, in in prime examples all over the world. You can see what happened in in England whenever the Normans came in. Uh, you know, immigration outnumbered the, the 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 birth rate, and it changed the whole population. Well, we're look in America. The, we stopped United, burning the witches. Well, look at the United States with with. Uh, when Western Europeans came, uh, not a lot of American Indians out there uh, doing doing things anymore, because the immigration rate was higher than the reproduction rate. Yeah, but okay, but but I think that that's a much different thing, uh, because for whatever re I say whatever reason, I think we know a lot of the reasons, but for reasons I'll say, the Europeans took it upon themselves to mass slaughter and relocate the Indians, which is a completely different thing they, than what we're talking about here with they, immigration. They did, which is part of what, but, but it's still an immigration issue. I mean, it, it, it really is. I mean, I, I understand what you're going. We're not talking about wholesale slaughter, but whenever you're... When it's like you're, when Hannibal immigrated the elephants over the mountains. No, it, it, I don't think it's the same thing at all because you've got somebody that's coming to stay and they're bringing a culture with them. The Normans are a better example. Okay. Uh, because when the Normans came into England, 
they, they, they changed the whole language. They changed the, the, the religion, the language, the culture, mm-hmm. everything. And they didn't do it by wholesale slaughtering. Yes, right. They, right. They, they, did, they did kill, but they did it by, by, by breeding in. Uh, the French in Canada, a great example. They did not come in and, and slaughter the Indians. They came in, and their plan was, we're going to turn the Bang Indians em. into good French. French or or uh, uh, Louisiana. Uh, a yeah, lot of yeah, French Louisiana. influence there. Most of Central and South America, where the Spanish came in and, and you know, for a few years they were slaughtering, but then they went, well, let's just breed with them and, and, and create them. create uh, good Spanish. It changes the culture of a place. And all those places are um, fine. Uh, well, I, I don't well, know. Except for Louisiana. Well, I, mean, we, okay, I think we can agree okay, there. You're, you're saying all those places are fine, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and while, I, while I agree they are, if you're of that native population that wanted to preserve your culture, you don't think it's fine. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Everybody wants their genetics. I, I, I'm not well, going to argue I, with I, that. I don't think it's a genetic thing. I think it's a culture thing here. Uh, I think when it, when somebody comes in and uh, you know, but you want to preserve your culture, and this does change the culture. I agree with that. Uh, everybody wants, and I'll expand my statement. Everybody wants their own genetics to to move on and their own memes to move on. Uh, okay. g- getting back to to Dawkins, uh, 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 meme, me- me- memetic. Anyway, meme theory. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll say with that. I agree. Yeah, everybody wants their own memes and genes to be the ones that pass on and preserve. Fine, but it, it you know it, you get into a thing here where there's so many there's going to be so many people in the future, right? And this does become somewhat a you know piece of the pie. So your competition to get your memes and genes across uh, is in direct conflict with everyone else's yeah, competition yeah. to do that. And, but but it, it does it does change a society, and I think you need to need to consider that. Um, the Roman Empire. I, I, I've I've argued in here before that mm-hmm. you know what killed the Roman Empire wasn't uh, you know we hear talking about the barbarian invasions. It wasn't the Germanics coming in and killing the Romans. It was the Germanics looking over the over the wall there and saying life's pretty good there. They went there and they changed changed the culture. Yeah. Um, so you, you know that's something to consider as as population uh, you know as, as numbers shift. Beyond that, if you look at the if you look at a at a, a graph of, of populations and how they're changing, with the increase in in technology, with the increase in uh, uh, medical advances, what we're seeing is an aging population. Mm-hmm. You're going to see a population that that is older, living longer. We're going to have about the same number of people. If you look at it, 40 years from now, the United States uh, and, and will have about the same number of people as they, they have today, but It'll be considerably older. You'll have a large amount of the population that's over 60 years old and a much smaller youthful population. Uh, this has been going on for a while. We reached peak youth in the United States in 1972. The conservatives finally figured out how to keep things from changing. I don't understand what conservative has to do with any of this. Uh, well, but, but, okay, so yeah. they don't want things to change and yeah. the stupid yeah. youth. Uh, now, yeah. We just won't yeah. read them. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, again... You just get old and set in your ways. Sorry, okay. go ahead. But... Let's let's you know let's look at, at real issues with this, guys, because we have an economic system that is built around the fact that population growth provides a market growth, and there is no there is no model out there that's ever ever been tried successfully that shows a a, a growth in in GDP, it shows a growth in in a. Uh, 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 quality of life without a growth in population. Mm-hmm. You have to have that pop, that population growing. If you have an aging population, you're going to have an issue with that. Plus, what, what about health care for the aged? What about our social security program oh, yeah. that we have? Well, that's you know, we have a pay-go system right now where the money that you pay into social security is not going into a lockbox like Al Gore said for you to uh, collect it. It's going to pay today's social security numbers. Yeah, yeah. well, and, and uh, I agree. We have for years, and, and, and this gets back into the, the, the old, you know, uh, Keynesian economics versus uh, Austrian economic debates, but we have built an entire economy. Oh, sorry. Uh, not just in this country, but around the world, we have built an entire economy based on the premise of we will live good today off the backs of our children. And look at any in, in, any long-term view on any economic model, yeah. who expected that bill to never come due? Yeah, it's a it's a Ponzi scheme. It's coming. Yeah. And, the, and, and, and I think the worry is, oh, shit, now the bill's due. Well, yeah, no shit. It was coming. Yep. But, but, but it's still something that we have to consider. What, yeah. you know, what, what, what are you going to do about it? Because you, you, it's an issue. You might be yeah. able to fuck that can down the road for another you know, 30 years, but eventually that can is going to hit. 
I, 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 yeah, I, it, it is. Yeah. It is. And that's the issue that we're running into now. Yeah. Uh, it's an issue that that's, uh, other countries have ran into before. Uh, you know, Russia. Uh, Greece. Yeah, Greece. Russia is actually paying. Australia is. Japan is. They're paying a, a bounty on, on newborns. They're, they're, they're paying you money to have kids because they're... Their nation, it, you know, that, that they can't function without it. They have to have something there to, to have the workforce. Yeah. If you have an aging workforce, then what you have, or an aging population is you have a declining workforce producing less goods uh, or less wealth to, to redistribute. You, you know who has been, I think, the best on this issue? And I, I disagree with so many of their methods. But I do have to say, as far as an economic system that does not uh, uh, as much, I'm going to use the words as much here, uh, uh, put the burden on, on the children um, and they seem to be doing really, they seem to be poised to do really well as China, right? Uh, they've got their issues right now. They do yeah. have their issues, but they've bought up most of our debt, which was what we yeah. were putting on the back of our children. They've been producing while everyone else has been consuming. They've been limiting their population growth to, to a much more sustainable level. But they've stopped that now. Yeah, they've stopped that now. Um, so here's my question. If when this whole thing comes out, China ends up on top because of the way they've poised themselves. I'm just I'm, I'm yeah. asking the question. Yeah. Does that mean communism won? Yeah. Uh, every every uh, uh, example that I saw lists China as a failed fa a failed program for this. I d I could not find anybody that said that, that, that China's population control problems were successful. Uh, they did have the one child policy f uh, because they had. Coming out of the nineteen out of World War II, they had a massive population explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, their baby boom made ours look like nothing, mm -hmm. and uh, they couldn't afford to to maintain their infrastructure. And now we've got a situation where they've they've gotten rid of that. That you know, and they did it incrementally. For a while, they had a one child policy, and then they had a one female child policy. You could have another male, but you couldn't have another female. And now they've gone through and said, uh, you know, you can you can have kids. You can have what you want now. Uh, Things have changed, and the reason why is because that bill came due for them. They looked around and they went, "We don't have we don't have the workers to to, to maintain this system," and that to me is a warning to us more than anything else. I don't think it's a it's a model to look to as this is what we should be doing. They uh, what we should learn from them is they figured out we have to fix this, and now we have to let's let's us, let's let's fix it before we get to that point. You know, and I don't know how to fix it. You know, it's really interesting to me, something I was uh, uh, looking at the other day. You know, most men in China have uh, multiple houses. Really? Yeah. And they, they only use one at a time. And the reason they have a secondary house is uh, the other house is an investment property for them. And quite often, and, and this has to do a lot with the, the, the low number of females they have due to the performance and policies, but uh, quite often, females won't even consider a male to be their mate unless they own at least two houses. It's a method of peacocking. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, I, I, it seems like it would be a, a bad use of resources. But, uh, well, and, um, and it, they're, is. They're, it is. And yeah. they're even having to, like, because there's such a demand for buying houses, they are building entire sections of towns that are just unfilled houses. And, and families are getting together, and instead of putting down a, a dowry for the wedding, they're putting down the down payment for their kids to have the second house so they can then find a mate. You know, uh, it doesn't fit in this, but we should do a show on the, uh, the, the Chinese ghost cities in, in Africa where they've, they've built whole cities because they, during the 1980s, the population problem was so out of control. They said, we got to do something with this. So they built these cities to, to, for the Chinese to go to in Africa, and nobody lives in them. There's just these empty cities that are built. Uh, but it's an interesting idea. Hey, let's talk about this wine before we move on. Let's do it. Um, Mike. Yeah. Do you mind going first? Because, uh, you, you know, you, you were kind of, you know, I, I said you know, yeah. it was going to be better because I picked it, and, and you, were, uh, you were skeptical, so I want to I hear All what right. you have to say. Tell me about the wine. What is it? Uh, this is a, is a cab, right? Yeah, it uh, no, like, it's a red blend. It's, it's a blend, like a cab. Okay. but but do you? Yeah. it tastes like a cab. Yeah. You mind? Uh, it, it is. It's and a this blend. is apothic vinery. Yeah, and it is um, aged in whiskey barrels for sixty days. Uh, I thought it was bourbon, but it is not. It's a fifteen point nine ABV. Okay, um, and it's twenty fifteen. 
Okay, so uh, a fairly fairly recent wine. Uh, you know, I, I I'm a I'm a red wine guy more than I am a white wine. I I, I don't like a fruity wine, and I don't like a, a that that wine. I like the drier red, and uh, I'm I'm a cab guy. Always have been. But this is pretty good. I mean, I've I've enjoyed it. Uh, not I'm not a wine specialist by any stretch. So you know, if you're a a wine guy out there, don't take what I'm saying. But but this is the wine that I would drink. I I enjoy it. I can taste the uh, the the aging from the from the, the mm-hmm. wine casks a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry, the whiskey casks. Although it's not overbearing, it's easy yeah. to drink. It's smooth. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd call it a a, a, a decent um, decent to good wine. I'll go I'll go to four. Two four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, you want to go next? You want me to? Uh. I feel like the aging in the whiskey barrels has given it some depth, um, a lot more depth than I think you'd get with a blend. Whenever you start blending them, it seems to mute the individual characteristics that you get out of a wine. Um, but all in all, it is great to drink. Um, the texture, the mouthfeel, um, the taste, the smell, it all works really well together. <coughs> It's a bit, um, there's a part of it, and I'm having a hard time identifying it. I have been as I've been kind of trying it. But there's something about it that's a little more aggressive than I would like to see in this wine, and I'm not sure where it's coming from, um, which is why all it's going to get from me is the 3.3. 3.3. Wow. Okay, I'll go ahead and give my number because I already have it. I'm going to give it a 3.2. Uh, I think the uh, woody notes from the whiskey uh, bring it out. Uh, one place where, you know, I'm, I'm torn on if it should be knocked or we should just rate it as it is, is the fact that it is a blend. And quite often, you know, the trade-off you make with a blended wine is you blend it because you want a more consistent taste. So you take some little sweeter, you take some a little bitter, and you get it to where it is, and then you continue to, to change ratios each year because your wines can be different each year but it's also a, a, a lazy way to make wine where you don't have to make one great wine you can make a few wines and then put them together into something really good uh so it, it's it's not going to be as as high quality as if you get one shot and you just make you know this yeah, this yeah. this great thing um but then again uh like i said the 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 aging does give it that complexity um, the ABV, uh, they hide it really well. Uh, you can tell it's, it's, it's a wine, but it, you know, if I had to guess, I would have given it like a 12, but it, you yeah, know, it's, it's yeah. almost 16, uh, which is, which is even high for a wine. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's, there's a lot more to say about that. It's, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit more sugars than, uh, I would like to see, but not a lot. Uh, and you can tell that by the fingers, uh, which yeah. are determined by viscosity because of remaining sugar. <coughs> so, um, I think y'all rated a little high, but uh, you know that's just uh, from from my perspective. This is a this is a good uh, this is a average to good be, good 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 wine. It's not it's not great. Well, but uh, but I, I I mean I, yeah. I I can't complain about it because I agree with everything that y'all said about this. I just I, I drink I drink enough red wines that I go ahead. This is what I would expect a, 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 a decent red wine to be. Well, yeah, and I, I, I really like this. And I'm going to tell you something that knocked it down uh, for me uh, was uh, having had Cooper's Thief. Because I think the, those two run in the same <coughs> category to me. And, and uh, uh, it's called Cooper's Thief, right? Mm-hmm. Cooper's Thief uh, uh, outshines Cooper's this. Thief, something like that. Yeah, it's, it outshines this one by a mile. So, I mean, I, I have to take all that into consideration. All right. Anyway. Well, do we play our game with wine? Uh, I think so. We uh, did last time. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Cooper's and Thief. <coughs> um, so I, I think it does get you laid. Um, obviously, being almost a 16% ABV, you want to be careful with it. Little Cosby. Um, but there is definitely an audience that is not going to appreciate this. Um, somebody who does not like a dry wine at all. This is not very dry. No, um, no, not. <coughs> but... <coughs> Can I just push him out of the chair? Yeah. I think I'm just dying. Be done with him. Yeah. Um, so somebody who doesn't like their wine dry at all is not going to like this. Um, but this is not an especially dry wine, so I do think that broadens the field. That's going to like it a little bit more. Um, 
but all in all, I, I think that with most people, it's going to definitely push you over the line, get you laid. Okay. Um, as for me, what date is it going to be on? I would I would throw this in on a, a first date, not a Hail Mary date, but a first date. I think this is a fine one to, to try with somebody. I think and it's safe. Yeah, it's safe, and that's a really good way to put it. It's safe. I do want to say, Mike, uh, uh, normally you rate, if it's a lawnmower beer, and I don't think that applies with wine. Yeah. So I think, uh, is this an evening study wine? Is that is that a, a fair a, question? A what? Great evening paper study. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good way to do wines. We'll, yeah. we'll do that. Uh, uh, a, a paper grading wine. Paper grading uh, yeah, wine. Yeah. There uh, you go. Or uh, evening study. I, I yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think this would be a perfect wine uh, to to sit down and, and grade papers. And I will tell you that that you want uh, what you want to do is 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 when I'm when you're turning in your papers, you want to make sure you're one of the very first ones to turn it in so it's at the bottom of the stack. Mm. Uh-huh. That way I will have had three of these before I, I grade your paper. <laughs> and, and the chances of you being successful... Especially if it's really bad. Like well, if you're I, not confident in I'm your just paper. saying, if I'm given 10 points for an identify and the term is Thomas Jefferson and you put Mr. and Miss Jefferson's son, there's a better chance that you're going to get one point <laughs> after the third one than if uh, you know yeah. if it's the first one. So, yeah. you know, uh, I've had that before. So. Yeah. Mr. and Miss Jefferson's son. Mm, wow. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah. It's I think I did that last semester. Uh, <laughs> did it work for you? Oh, worked wonders, actually. <laughs> <coughs> no, I, right. I did a paper in like six hours. Uh, got a an email from my professor an hour and a half before it was due going, you're stressing me out waiting till the last minute. I was like, I didn't realize I had to read a book until yesterday. So, <laughs> wow. So I got I got a question for yep. you to kind of bring us back into the show. So we've talked about population and staggering yep. growth and our opinions on that, but the name of the show is Bisectomy Zoning. Yep. So how does zoning yeah. play into this whole? That's actually uh, I I came across an article. Uh, I, th- I think it was on Drudge Report uh, uh, a couple of days ago, thinking about this, and uh, it was it was amazing when I read this. Uh, the headline was vasectomy zoning, and I went, what the hell is that? And it turns out that this is a uh, – I, I went down this rabbit hole looking up stuff about it. And this is actually an issue in a lot of your, your, your cities, particularly in the gentrified areas of cities. And what they're doing is they're zoning out uh, homes with, um, with, with more than two-bedroom bed, two homes. They're just completely zoning them out. And when the we reason- were looking for a house in Dallas, I was having a really hard time finding a three-bedroom home that wasn't half a million dollars. Yeah. Now you're using a specific term, and I feel like you're getting it from a clickbaity headline, so I want to be clear. Yeah. The city is saying you can't have more than that here, or the developers no. just aren't building No, them. the city is actually creating zones for uh, uh, that, 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 are, that, are, that are designed for small... Uh, it, 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 it's, what they're doing is they're zoning in retired couples. And they're saying that homes with more than two bedrooms are not like allowed. Retired couples? Well, because a lot of those people end up moving into these townhouses with one bedroom and uh, and, and one. Uh, and that, that's what they're doing. You, you I know, assumed and, that they were geared more toward like millennial couples no, who don't have kids. No, they it, uh, don't want kids. No, they're that, in fact they're trying to keep that that group out because of the fear of them aging and wanting to have. have they're trying to keep children out of these areas. They mm-hmm. also. Beyond beyond the, uh, the the housing, they're zoning out things like pizza parlors. They're zoning out things like uh, fast food restaurants because they're, they're trying friendly. to create a, 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 a an area that's gentrified that is for retirees for the most part. Um, and and you're seeing it. In Atlanta's done it a lot. Uh, I saw Philadelphia's done it. New York's done it in a lot of areas, particularly Ch- the Chelsea area. They're going through and intentionally zoning a neighborhood so. You cannot, uh, so it's, it's not friendly, particularly to young uh, uh, new parents. So we did a no show uh, last season on alternative marriages, I think we called it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's real funny. Uh, one thing that I think we can all agree on, whether we agree on what's right, what's wrong, and what's more popular, is that our generation, more than past generations, is changing marriage. Yeah. Um, and some aren't getting married. Some are getting married under different arrangements. Some, uh, and one of the ones that we talked about was uh, living together apart. I think it was called. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I, it just it occurred. And part of this has to do with uh, uh, females entering professional workplaces at higher salaries, um, 
in in more recent years. Uh, but one of the things that, that that cracks me up is is these retirees are going to have uh, quite an awakening when the couple moves down to the the houses on either side of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know they, Marie's going to have a house yeah. one on either side of you. Exactly. You're just going to walk across your yard. Every, yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Let, let the kids run across. <laughs> but uh, but this is a this is a serious issue. Yeah. Uh, and, and think about the effects this has in, in neighborhoods where they've they've spent millions of dollars building schools, mm-hmm. and now they're going to go through and they're going to zone this area, and you're going to have these 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 ghost schools. Ghost schools. Um, and, and we've already seen them in places. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so much in the U.S. It, because it's a, it's a relatively new thing, this, this vasectomy zoning in the U.S. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's been going on in other places for a long time. Uh, they talk about, I, I watched a YouTube video about, about this in, in China. And uh, I'm sorry, in Japan. God, I can't believe I got Japan and China confused. <laughs> That's, that, that, they're, they're totally different. But, uh, he in, does up the other goes down. Yeah, in, <laughs> in Japan, they were... Uh, they they set these these vasectomy zoning mm-hmm. in order to create uh, these these neighborhoods mostly for over sixty people. You know this is, this is their goal, and so nobody's playing they, on your lawn. Yeah, and they've got this school that was built in the nineteen eighties that, that 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 they said used to have I've forgotten how many thousands of kids in it, and now they have one kid enrolled in third grade. They should turn it into an indoor uh, farmers you know, market. Uh, so so down the road. If you've yeah, got an like infrastructure that, that was built around this, the, around this, you're going to have issues. Uh, think about that neighborhood that, that, that intentionally zones out these, these, these kids. Uh, you, it might be really nice for about 10, 12 years. But then who's going to work your, uh, you know, you know, who's going to go to work at these places? Who's uh, going to mow your lawn? Who's going to oh, mow yeah. your lawn? Who's going to do all this? Because they're not going to drive from across town to do it. Oh, hell no. Um, well, I love how they're playing both sides of the coin here. They're both mm-hmm. complaining that millennials aren't buying houses and zoning millennials out of family homes and complaining that mill- millennials aren't having kids. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like you're I, making it really goddamn well, difficult to do any I, of those I, things. I, I don't I don't think they're all the same people. No, I think we're talking about different groups. People. I think but you have like one group that's saying you need to have more kids and one saying, screw that. I don't like kids. Yeah, uh, I'm the get off my lawn guy. So I'm OK with you not having kids. It, it, but Fine. but the, the general thing you get from the whole yeah. mishmash is like, I want you to exist far away from me so you can pay for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want to see you. I want you to send me money. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah. Now, we've seen all of these cases of, 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 of what's happening. And I, th- I don't think you can deny that, 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 that there's, a, there's a problem on the horizon. There's a change for sure. Yeah, there's, there's a change. What do you do about it? The, or do you do anything about it? Because, I don't think you do. Um, I, 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 I think you've got to do something. I think what you have to I don't think, I don't think what I don't think you have to do something about the population. I think you have to do something about the system. Oh, because yeah. we cannot, it, it, our current system cannot function uh, in a system where there's 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 a declining youth population. Because we have Social Security, <laughs> we have Medicare, yeah. that cannot have, exist in this system. You have to have a system that is independent of the fluctuations in birth and death rates. You have to have that. Otherwise, you are constantly changing things. And, you know, and, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know what would be great? If we had a large number of people that we could import who would pay more in taxes and they would consume in, um, and well, in programs, they're, 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 the problem with that the problem with that is how do they get over the wall? Yeah. Ladders. You know, so uh, <laughs> we make ladders here and there actually, and tunnels, and tunnels, and tunnels. Yes, but uh, there's but just that, a measly five point nine billion stated between but, them. <laughs> but but that goes that goes beyond uh, or, or goes back to what you were saying earlier about about wanting them both. We, How tall a wall could we build across the border if we just used the dollar bills instead of actual <laughs> concrete? But we want we want to fix this problem. We say that there's a danger of our population uh, uh, not growing. We mm-hmm. we look down the road and we go, we have to do something about this population. And then in the same in the very next breath, we say, well, we got to stop immigration. Yeah, Denmark is actually subsidizing private companies to try to stimulate uh, population growth. I saw where Denmark is uh, uh, offering uh, bonuses for parents that send their their, their kids their on vacation, kids on vacation yeah. because Be- it's, it increases the chance of you getting pregnant. Yes. Yeah. You can write off the vacation you send your kids on. They also have um, a commercial program called, I think, Do It For Mom. <laughs> And it's as long as it's not it's, do it to mom. It, it's Ooh. have sex, have sex for your mother, 
so she can have grandkids. Have you ever I seen? I think I've seen. It's that? a disgusting commercial. That's I think so I've, creepy. I've seen that channel on Pornhub. Have you ever seen the the <laughs> Let's terrible? Let's do it with mom. No. The, the, have you ever seen the terrible movie Grease Two? No, thank goodness. Yes, there's I a song. Grease there's enough. a song in Grease Two mm-hmm. where they're in a uh, a bomb shelter, and he's trying to convince this girl to have sex with him. And the song is called "Let's Do It for Our Country." <laughs> Well, and and yeah. that also featured the the famous song "Reproduction." Reproduction. What? Reproduction. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. And they I, were in a sex ed song. class and and started busting out into songs. The only dance. line I remember for that song is, "I bet Why? she doesn't even know what a pistol is." So uh, you know, you're gonna have to watch that now. No, I'm not. Uh, it, oh, it's worth it. It's worth no. it. It's, it's one of those ones that's so bad that you have to watch it. It should be oh, featured yeah. on Mystery Science Theater 3000. That would have been should should have been something. All right, so I've kind of been through my list. My, my, my question is, and, and, and I think maybe we've answered it, but let's kind of just really quickly. Is this a problem or is this just uh, something that we've, that we've, that's made up? It, it is a problem, and, and I'm going to use this term quite literally and figuratively. It's a first world problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, you Except know. it's in third worlds too at this point, but yeah, it is more first world, yeah. But, but it, it, it's a first world problem, and... and here, here's here's the overarching problem that I see that is is feeding into this. We want to have all our problems magically solved without doing any work to get it. Yeah. So we're turning to the government and saying, "Hey, you know what? I don't want those those. I don't want kids in my neighborhood. I'm going to use this, and I'm using it for two different groups that have different motives." Pick whichever group you're part of. I don't care. I don't want those brown people with different culture near me. Oh yeah. Yeah. I also want people here, or gay people, or black people, or you know, I don't want those other. Yeah, I don't, I don't want, want those. I don't want those others. Other group here. I don't want those others here, but I do want enough people to support me, uh, and my kids should live there. I, you know, can can we maybe put a red line on a map and they can live on the other side of the red line? Would that be that? No, <laughs> oh, that that would be a bad plan, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would but, be a bad plan. But but um, but yeah. If so you didn't get that, you're too young or too stupid to watch this show. Um, so. Maybe both. <laughs> uh, they're not mutually exclusive. But um, Mike, but 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 here's the deal: we uh we we want all those things. So instead of like actually getting out there and talking about the issues and either trying to save money so we don't have to worry about this, not count on Social Security as as my generation has been told for years we won't have. Uh, probably my true. generation was told that. Yeah. Well, and and we'll see. We'll see. Uh, or, or I've know. always said my generation wouldn't, but I'm getting yeah. closer to it, and I'm thinking that maybe we will. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not counting on it. But any yeah. other number and of you shouldn't, and nobody ever should have. Nobody, nobody should get it. You should get what you paid in. Nobody should have counted on it. No. Any other number of practical solutions that that could fix this problem? What we are doing is some guy or gal stands up in front of a camera and says, "Give me your vote, and I'll fix all this. Give me a job, and I'll fix all this." And we think, ah. I'll go vote my problems away, as we've done for years. Yeah, and the thing is, we have no idea how to fix this. No, and they don't either. Yeah. And it, we need to put in the work. Go ahead. Madam Mistress, I didn't have anything did you have something to yes, say about do. this? Uh, do you, is it a real problem? Oh, oh, that it's my turn. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think it is. I, I think that this is what happens. Um, and the problem, I think, is that we had a very short-term view when we were planning for our society. Very short, less than 100 years from, <coughs> from, from what created most of these yeah. issues. Yeah. Um, so when we were trying to structure our society, we had a very short-term view. Fuck the progressives. And we are attempting now to reconcile with that. The, the change in our population growth um, is not the problem, though. It's something that we should have... We should have looked and said, all right... Um, before we go making any wide sweeping policies, let's make sure that if shit changes, it's not going to fuck us up. Yeah. And and we didn't do that, and we're paying the price for that now. But it's not the population change, pop- population growth rate change that's the problem there. Yeah, I think it is a problem. Uh, but uh, but 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 I don't I don't know how to fix it. But the historian in me looks at it and and, and goes, I know I know what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, if 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 the population ages and we lose the uh, we lose the market that's there, if we don't have the market to sell our goods here, 
we, we're going to do what we've done before. We're going to uh, do something like we're going to go to a third world country. We may call it an open door or something mm-hmm. and, and force markets open. And we're going to force uh, uh, um, other markets to buy, buy shit that they don't want to buy. Yeah, because we're going to start what getting our retirees to go and retire in the ghost towns in Africa. Well, or, or what we're going to do is we're going to park our gunships outside of Singapore or outside of some place. And we're going to say, uh, would you like to buy our shit or would you like us to flatten you? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we're going to have a little boxer rebellion here and we're going to overthrow your government and establish a puppet government. Uh, by the way, you need shit, right? Well, we have shit and we need a market. So, uh, you know, here you go. Yeah. It's what we've done. We did it in Hawaii. We did it in Cuba. We did it in Panama. We've done it all over South America. Mm-hmm. It's what we do. And we are really fucking good at it. We yeah. are really fucking good at it. And the other side of that is, let's be honest here. That's what having more guns than anybody else has will do for okay, you. Okay, but but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in here and, and, and make the unpopular view too. And that's the fact that we are really good at it and it has improved the the uh, uh, the uh, life expectancy in places. It has improved the standard of living in some places. Now, it has done it at a, at a severe cost, and I'm not saying it's right. right. But if you're honestly looking at it... Uh, Cuba was economically more stable after we went in. Panama was pa- Panama did better after we went in. Uh, North Korea did better after we went in. Economically, it it it, it can benefit. Yeah, and but, you know, but it doesn't make it right. You exactly. know, and I have to ask, and I I actually don't know Mike Tyson's background, so but I'm I'm using this as hyperbole. But I don't know how we're going to Mike Tyson, the noted economist. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So, but 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 let's say that Mike Tyson became such a great boxer because he was constantly beaten by his father, right? That's that. Oh, that's beca- how we got there. Okay. Yeah, that, there's actually be- some truth to that if you watch his story. Well, then yeah. there you go. But then you have to ask the question. So, was he justified in the ends because his son became the greatest boxer in the world? Yeah. yeah. Or but and, he and still that's beat exactly his the kid. Point that Mike yeah. Is made, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I don't disagree. I guess yeah. what I'm saying is I don't disagree with the unpopular view you're making. I'm yeah. just I gotta ask. Cause the right way to yeah, do it. Agreed, right. agreed. And, you know. and and I think but but I think we have to look at we have to look at the whole of history and say that that gunboat diplomacy was not necessarily a failed system. Uh, whether depends it was on your right, goal. whether it was right or not, it yeah, yeah, it does depend it depends on how how are you measuring it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and on what time frame? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question that I want to ask you, and I don't know if this is something where we need to wrap up this show and go to a hard shot. Okay. Uh, oh, or shit, if we want to, hard if, 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 yeah, I haven't done one in a while. If, if, if we want to go ahead and, and do it on this, but but it, it revolves around the idea that you've talked about, you've mentioned so many times how um, Rome was defeated by immigrants. So the question I want to ask, and I'll let you answer whether we need to do it here or yep. later. Uh, would you rather, and this is putting away your your intellectual morbid interest in seeing Rome firsthand, yeah. would you have rather have lived in Rome or Greece? Oh, that's an interesting question. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's an interesting question. We should do a hard shot on that. Okay, let's do a hard shot. Okay. Uh, so A year and a half later, we've done by the a way, hard by shot. By the way, uh, for our audience that that, uh, that, 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 that wants to hear a hard shot, how do they go about doing that? I don't remember. Let's, it's been so long. Let's do this. We have our second podcast feed. We'll put it out there, but, oh, but I want to... I want to do something else. Did we start just putting them on YouTube this year? I think that's Let's what we decided. Let's put this on YouTube. Okay. If you want to hear this hard shot, go subscribe to our YouTube. Yeah. You can see For us. For real, we put out like extra videos on there. Yeah. 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 And, and and you'll see our hard shot on there. And this... Uh, and our ugly mugs. Yeah. Speak for yourself. I'm fucking sexy. Yeah. Everybody says so. I said mugs. It did not necessarily mean three. <laughs> it could have just been Or faces. Two. It just could be coffee mugs. We don't know. Yeah. All right, so I we have an ugly coffee mug. Uh, you, 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 shh, 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 shut the fuck shush. up, John. You shut. Shush. Stop. All right, uh, women. Yeah. Um, she's gonna hit me with that bottle in it. So, if we covered this pretty well, y'all think? I think so. I found it to be an interesting topic, especially something that came off of literally a, a clickbait headline that I that I saw and, and found interesting. Um, I don't know that we made any progress towards solving the problem. Uh, Anna's trying to screw me over here. I'm I don't not know sure that there is a about. problem. Uh, there's a problem, John. You're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong, and I'm right. And, and we just need to establish that. There's a problem, hey, uh, and it's in your Mr. Head. Producer, if there's any way we could possibly get a sign when I speak that says he's right over my head, and when John speaks it says he's wrong over his, John's that would be wonderful. John's the one wonderful. that does the video editing. Well, right now, but but the producer's back there, and I'm hoping he can fix it. <laughs> but he can't. Uh, not f- Hey, uh, Mr. Producer, you have a challenge. She said that you're, you're not <laughs> capable you of fixing that. I can make it work. Okay. All right. So are, are we good? Yeah. Oh and then God. wrap us up there, Madam Mistress. What do we what, what what do we need to do? I'm gonna 
to stab you. <laughs> um, if they want to buy shit from us, where can, where can they buy the shit? Shut the up, Mike. Well, you Thank you guys so for much. The first for time ever. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this show, you can hit us up and support us on patreon.com slash sixpack philosophy. You can get some super cool swag from teespring.com slash store slash sixpack philosophy. I swear to God, one day I will stab you. Oh, promises, promises. Um, Patreon. I already did that one. Hit up our website at sixpackphilosophy.com. Find us on social media by simply searching Six Pack Philosophy. Other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hey. We've enjoyed it, and we hope you have to. Shut up, Mike. No, i got a good one here. Cheers. Because, because for the first time ever, our show, Cheers. Our, 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 our You Can't Stop the Chinese shirt is appropriate Cheers. to our show. Cheers. <laughs> Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.